What's going on, y'all? So, so we are back for an all new episode of If Loving You Was Wrong. This is still season three, episode ten, the continuation. We are back from the mid season break. So I don't know why they put it on on Wednesday and at nine o'clock, bitch. Listen, I'm so used to the shit coming on on Tuesday. I'm so used to it coming on Tuesdays at, what, 8 o'clock or whatever. So, it's throwing me off a little bit. But, hey, we'll get through it. I hope everybody watched it. If you didn't watch it, I'm pretty sure they're going to be rerunning it. You know, they're probably going to watch it on own. But let me tell you something. <laughs> Kelly had me fucked up this whole episode. Because, let me tell you, Kelly is the type of person that you do not take with you on a crime. If you finna go lie to somebody, if you finna go commit even the smallest infraction of a fucking crime, do not take her with you because that bitch is going to uh, shock out, okay, and she's just going to lose her mind, all right? At first, I'm sitting here like, is she going for the temporary insanity plea because it's like she reverted back to a child, and I was so confused. Now, I know when people go through some things, they go into shock, you know, and I was like, is this PTSD or something, you know? Um, that she's going through. This is shock. I'm pretty sure she's shocked. So that's why she was acting the way she was. But I just didn't like the way that they had her acting. Like it was just, it was, it, it was very childlike. And I know it probably could happen, but it just didn't seem real believable. But anyway, um, y'all know at the end of the mid season break, the mid season finale, episode nine. Travis came over to the crib. Now, I can't remember if she invited him over, but I do know she let him in the house. And I do know she was over his fuck shit, and um, she was going to kill that nigga. And that's exactly what happened. Well, she ain't kill him so that we don't we don't know if she killed him or not. Well, they, nigga in the hospital, okay? But what wound up happening is, you know, he was doing all this stuff, and they were seducing each other. She was playing games with him, and then when he started to come forward, next thing you know, pop, pop, pop. And I'm pretty sure one of them bullet holes went to his chest or whatever, so he was just laying there. Now, when we come back, we just see the body laying there, and we see Kelly just looking at it like, okay, whatever. She tiptoes away like it's a normal thing and just goes into justice room. I was like, how justice ain't wake up and hear this shit? What type of thick ass walls y'all got and heavy ass sleeping child you got, okay? You know, he said, mommy, is everything okay? And that nigga went right back to sleep. <laughs> I wish y'all could sleep like that, girl, because listen, listen, that was some, justice was out. He was knocked out. He was like, I had a long ass day. Justice was in that sleep like he worked a 12 hour shift at the fucking hospital. And at the warehouse all together at the same time. How the fuck he do that? I don't know. Okay. And got a science project done at the same time. And she in the bed with him. And I was just like, okay. Now at this moment, I realized she was in shock. And then of course you get Natalie. Um, that girl is like me. She can't sleep through nothing. She wakes up, but Natalie just nosy as hell. Natalie is nosy as hell. She got to be in everybody's business, but Natalie is that type of friend that you want, but then that type of friend that'll get you fucked up unintentionally. Like, her intentions are good, but she goes about it the wrong way, and it'll put you in more trouble, in more mess. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Um, So, she was telling Lucius, Lucius just, I told y'all, Lucius finally gets a chance to lay his ass down and go to fuck to sleep. Lucius looked like he was in the midst of a good sleep. Like, his body was just sunk into the bed like this. And Natalie like, look, bitch, you're going to have to wake up because I heard gunshots. Lotion is like, look, no, you didn't. Go back to sleep. She's like, yes, get your ass up. So, of course, she gonna have, he got to get up. Go over there, and she sees out the window Travis Carr. So, of course, this piques his interest. He goes next door, and they see, first of all, and Natalie just, like I said, she knows it. And she don't like to pay attention and follow rules and instructions. Because Lucia said, Keep your ass in the house. She coming out the door. Keep your ass in the house. I'm going to stand on the porch. Okay, now that would have been me too. Because I want to see what's going on, but I don't want to get all the way up in there. Because when shit pop off over here, I look be dead out there in the window like this. i never forget when um my neighbors next door was having a fight. They was drunk as shit. And them niggas was over there fighting. They was arguing and everything. They had the baby mamas pulling up and everything. And they was just going back and forth. You took my son and all that shit. The cops pulled up, bitch. I was just sitting out there looking like, this is, why do you need cable when um you got the shit popping off right there in front of your yard? 
So anyway, you know, Lucius goes over, sees Kelly, sees um uh Travis on the floor, and he was like, What did you do? What did you do? Kelly is like, Shh, shh. Cause he was knocking and he bust the door open because nobody would open up the door and he was calling Kelly and he was like, Kelly was like, Shh, shh, justice is sleeping. You go wake him up. And I was like, girl, what the fuck is going on? Did you just go remedial? No offense. Because that's how she was talking, okay? Bitch, she was like, <laughs> Lucia said, what the fuck happened? She said, well, I put him in the bed around 9 o'clock. Lucia said, bitch, I ain't talking about justice. I'm talking about this body laying on the goddamn floor. Kelly, what the fuck you do? Okay, it was like, did this nigga just bust in the door? Did, 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 was the alarm on? What, what, what happened? I shot that motherfucker. Okay, I shot him. I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy, bitch. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I just made myself laugh like that. Fuck out of here. But, uh, she was just, it's just like, I don't know, like, I, I wish they would have played it better because it came off very comical the way that they had her portrayed as, you know, being shot. And she's a good actress. She's a good actress um, because I've seen her on other things. But <sighs> she was just so in shock. She was just like, you know, I invited that motherfucker in. The alarm was off. He came over. It is what it is. She was in shock. I shot that motherfucker. I shot him. I shot him because I'm tired of this bitch messing with me. Okay. I shot his ass. And Lucia was like, you know what? Kelly. Kelly. Okay, no, that's not the right one. Kelly. There you go, bitch. You can tell which hand I'm dominant with because, okay, there you go, bitch. No, let me stop it. Anyway, and she was like, God damn it, Kelly. What the fuck? All right. He trying to help her out because he calls the cop. Kelly was not about to call the cop. Bitch, when he was about to call the cop, she said, no, let him die. I want him to die. I said, Kelly, me and you on the same page in this. But Lucian ain't going to let that happen. I was like, Lucian, this could solve all our problems if we could just have one big one. And that's Kelly going to jail because technically... In hindsight, you could say it's self-defense, but she literally did lure that man to the house. So, you know, that's what make it mean that that'll make it look like it's premeditated murder. Okay? And then listen to what she's saying and if they get a statement from her. See, that is the only reason why it is good in this case to have a fucking cop as your friend and to be in your neighborhood. Because Lucian came through and Lucian was like, Listen, I'm gonna keep the cops away from you. Natalie showed up. Natalie, oh, God, I said, girl, you from the hood. You done seen a nigga get shot before. Stop playing. Anyway, um, projects at that. Your son, what the fuck? We gonna get back on Joey? Joey just riding up in jail, you know. Anyway, you just saw Quan body on the floor. Girl, anyway, so she come up in there. They was like, take her next door because he gonna try to keep the cops away from her. Um, you know, they called the cops, called the ambulance because Nally had already called the ambulance. They have it coming and... Um, you know, Esperanza shows up. Esperanza shows up. We got Kelly, Natalie, Esperanza at um, Natalie's place. And here is Esperanza. Are you okay, honey? Natalie said, girl, she in shock. Kelly is sitting there looking like Miss Seeley when she was on that porch just rocking in that chair. No, she looking like old Miss Sophia when she was in there. I just sitting in that jail. I just rocking that jail. You know, when she was just sitting there rocking. She couldn't do nothing, you know, when they beat her ass after that, you know. That's how Kelly was sitting there looking. And you're going to ask this girl if you okay, honey. And then Natalie said, she's in shock, okay. Here go Esperanza yet again. Are you okay, honey? I said, girl, Natalie just told you she in shock. You can see Kelly is in shock. Quit asking these dumb questions. Esperanza is my least favorite character on here, okay. Now, and, and, and you know, we already hate Randall and, and, and Eddie, okay. That's given. But Esperanza out of the girls, I can't stand that bitch because she just, she irks my soul with the way that she acts. She is the type of friend that you don't tell shit to and you don't do certain things around because she wants to put that moral code up. And, oh my gosh, if you do this, you know that's going to happen. No, did you? Because later on in the episode, while they was talking and she was telling them about what happened, Kelly was just talking in the same way. Like, the lady is in shock, okay? 
And um, they kept on questioning her. She was like, no, I want to hit her die. I want to hit her die. Like Kelly snap. And she's like, oh my God, stop, stop, stop. I said, girl, let the bitch get the shit out. Okay. You know what's been going on. She knows what's been going on. Esperanza, Natalie, this is not the first time you heard anything about this man coming over there messing with her. Okay, fine. So I guess Lucian didn't tell, um, um, Natalie, the whole story about how the alarm wasn't off because they outside and they doing all this stuff talking. And here go Esperanza. So you didn't tell Natalie. I was like, what are you about to do? We are finna be, we trying to be sympathetic. Be sympathetic to your friend. And I understand, you know, sometimes we want to look at the truth and, you know, get it all out. But in this moment, I don't want to see that. Okay. I just want you to be like, you know, this man has been bothering her, so it's understandable that she would do this and all this shit. The way that she came, she was like, nah, bitch, Kelly gonna go to jail because Kelly fucked this shit up. Kelly lured that nigga over there. Kelly did all this shit. And then who gave her the gun? Because her gun is locked up. Natalie, this your fucking gun, bitch, that's gonna come back on you. I said, bitch, get off your moral high ground horse, okay? I'm gonna knock you off, all right? Just be there and be supportive, okay? The way that she said it, it was real, it was truth, but she came off kind of judgmental to me. And that's how Esperanza always do, like, like she ain't never fucked up in her life or whatever. And so she judging her friends. That's how she always feel, comes off to me, and I just I just don't like her, okay? And um, at this point, we see uh, Marcy. Marcy was over there in the car with Brad. Brad had to let her know, let me tell you something, bro. She was like, I feel so stupid. I said you should. Okay, he was like, let me tell you something. I love you, all right? But I love my wife, too. And we're going to make that shit work. You know, we had a good time. We had a good run. I'm still be here for you. But that's my motherfucking wife, okay? Regardless of the bullshit that she didn't pull, yeah, I should still be upset. Like, upset, upset. I am. But see, I'm finna mature enough and know that my heart won't what my heart won't. And it ain't you, bitch, okay? So calm the fuck down. It is what it is. Okay, I'm going to be cool. Let me call this bitch and leave her the fuck alone. But, you know, she did threaten me and say that she was going to tell Randall that I'm pregnant if I keep on fucking with you. Next thing you know, Brad gets a phone call from Alex saying, hey, come back to the neighborhood because it was some shooting next door and the police is out. At the same time, um, Marcy is on the phone and she listening to a message from Randall. She puts it on speakerphone and was like, that bitch done told. And it was like, what you talking about? Randall talking about, oh, so you pregnant? Oh, so you pregnant with that nigga's baby? Okay. And so now Marcy and her feelings because she think Alex told. Granted, I don't give a fuck about this situation because, you know, whatever happens to Alex and Randall happens to Alex and Randall. They got themselves in this shit. So I would never be team them. But... Marcy jumped the gun and thought that Alex mom told. When Brad confronted her about the whole thing, um, she was like, so you told him? She was like, hell no. So you mean to tell me you couldn't wait until I left to go over there and tell him shit? She was like, wait a minute, bitch. Okay, I get it. I fucked that nigga. I had a baby by that nigga. I fucked him all over in the shed and the backyard. We got traces of our bodies and fluids every fucking well. But what the fuck you not going to do is you not going to keep on judging me. And you not going to keep on um saying, oh, questioning me every move that I make. Did I do this and did I do that? I said, bitch, yes, the fuck he is. You don't have the right, okay? Y'all still trying to get this shit back on track. It's only been a few days, okay? It's only been a few days since he's been back up in the house. Well, actually, less than a few days. And y'all still trying to get this back on track. So you still trying to build up trust. So, baby, it's going to still happen. He's still going to be on the, you know, that, bitch, are you doing this and are you doing that? And let me tell you something, Brad. If you're going to keep this up, though, I know you you got the right to do that. You need to just leave the bitch because you, you look like you really can't trust the hoe, okay? So, if there's no trust in a relationship, it ain't no relationship if you ask me. So, after that... You know, she was like, I didn't do anything. I didn't tell him nothing. You believe me, right? He said, bitch, I got to go to bed. <laughs> Left her ass hanging right there. But see, what Brad had me fucked up with, when they was all in the neighborhood talking about the whole thing, you know, how, um, what, what Kelly did and all that shit. Brad was so stuck on the fact that Kelly had a gun in the neighborhood. And that he was like, but we got kids. And I said, okay, and she got a son too. You know, it's a lot of people who got kids who own guns and all this shit. And he kept on saying he was just so bent on the fact that, oh, she had a gun and we got kids. And not focusing on the fact that this man was coming after her. Okay. And like Lucian said, 
had it not been him, it would have been Kelly. He would have came over here and he would have killed Kelly, okay? So, it's a good thing that she did have that gun to protect herself, even though she had it illegally, you know, but he's not focused on that, okay? And I can't stand, you know, I don't have a problem with people owning guns, okay? I just want you to go around the, the right channels to get it, all right? And I won't strict the gun laws, but okay, we're not going to go through that. But um, it is what it is. That's your Second Amendment right, okay? So, get out your punk ass feelings bitch like she was protecting herself and you know the situation that was going on i don't know if you really know but you know something of it okay but hey it is what it is that high and mighty shit fuck out of here you went overseas to go kill people so now you're gonna come over here talking about some weak ass kids no people that you killed over there probably had kids too Bloop. moving on from that um whether they was innocent or not they still had kids anyway so moving on from that um while they outside talking, Lucians keep on getting a phone call from fucking Eddie. Where is Eddie, you might ask? We look into Randall's house. Randall and Larry are laid out on their couch like this. I say, you know you drunk as fuck when you sleep like that, okay? Because I don't sleep like that. You know, I got to get comfortable as hell, you know. But, um, i never forget. One of them times I went out to Atlanta. The last time I went out to Atlanta, was I with the ghetto view? Yes, I was with the ghetto view. Let me fucking tell y'all how we turned the fuck up in the car. We got fucked up in the car. We was we was high as hell, drunk as fuck. Because I told y'all we went to Magic City and I guess we went on the wrong night because bitch you weren't you popping like it was. Like I thought it would have been. But all I know by the time I got to the hotel, I passed out in a room somewhere somehow. I was just out of it, you know, so I understand that shit. Bitch, next thing you know, we see Eddie upstairs chained up in dominatrix wear, leather, le leather. you know, he got whips and chains and shit. And my whole question, I said he got a cock thing going. I said, who took his drawers off and who put that on? And, and, and you know they had to really fill up on him and put it on there and have to take his ding ding and put it into the little pouch or whatever. And I was just sitting here like, Eddie, you let these men do that to you? I know they, they drugged him. They drugged him or whatever. But damn, it make me think, what the fuck else happened? Which other line did they cross? Okay, I mean, did y'all go all the way in there? Did you go and give him a prostate exam? I'm, I was, I'm, I'm questioning these things, you know, because Randall and Larry don't look like they're above doing anything else but that. You know, they look like they into a whole bunch of bullshit. Because I told you, they sound and gave off a rapey vibe when they was recounting, um, recounting all, uh, reiterating all that shit that they was doing. Back in the day, you know, and I was like, mm, some of that shit sound like rape, but okay. I hope you got consensual uh, permission. But moving on from that, he was drugged. So when he's coming out of his little grogginess, he see his pants on the floor. He trying to go over there and get them because they got him chained up. He used his legs to get the pants, whatever. The phone comes out. He used his toe to, uh, you know, press down on it. And he said, call that bitch. Bitch, I said, you know what? There are some people in my phone. I said, I knew Eddie had somebody in his phone named something like that, okay? I was surprised that Esperanza was in his phone as Esperanza. I for damn sure thought she was going to be that cunt or some shit like that. Bitch, I thought that bitch was going to be Esperanza, but it was Lucius. <laughs> I got one of my friends. <laughs> one of my friends in my phone call. Call it out. <laughs> That shit name is really hoe, okay? This hoe, all right? But um, anyway, moving on. Um, He called like at least five times and Lucian wasn't trying to answer. And then eventually he went on ahead and answered. He was all out of breath and, you know, you could tell like he was under the influence of something. And Lucian's like, first of all, why you talking like that? Why you sound like that? Why the fuck you calling me? Look, man, I need your help. These motherfuckers got me tied up, okay? They got me tied the fuck up. They put on... Rihanna's album, they said whips and chains excite me and shit, and I just don't know what's going on. Bitch, Lucia said, I ain't got time for this, fuck you. I said, oh, so the nigga you was coming after of and talking all this shit to, it's the one that you run into to get some fucking help to help save your ass. Okay, my how the tables have turned. And then at this point, he started calling Esperanza. Esperanza finally answered and was like, fuck this shit. Mind you. You know, um, the lawyer had came over and was talking to Kelly, too, about everything that was happening because he was like, you know, this is going to be a whole bunch of shit. 
Um, Travis Daddy got a whole bunch of judges and lawyers and prominent people up in the community that go to this church. And it was like, yeah, but your son is a sicko and the other son ain't no shit either. Okay, obviously, since he always getting arrested on some stuff. Um, when that happened, bitch, they went over there to the house. Marcy was like, we can go because that's still my house. So I'm going to open up the door for y'all asses. They knocked on the door. Um, I was like, I know Randall and Larry ain't finna sleep through this shit. They was about to, but they woke up. And they was like, what the fuck you doing here? Marcy said, this still my home. Bitch, Larry went into lawyer mode and said, you can't search for shit because this ain't got no warrant. Marcy said, bitch, I get him permission. Take your ass upstairs and see what the fuck is going on. This whole time, Larry was acting suspect. Now, I really didn't even care. And I wasn't even mad that he was doing all this stuff because we don't fuck with Eddie. So, hey, it is what it is. And... Lucian went up there looking through the house and he saw him. He was like, ain't this bad a bitch? He was like, just give me the gun. They ain't got my gun. I need my... I said, Eddie, who the fuck you gonna shoot? You still tied up. He gotta get the keys, okay? So he go get the keys. And they was like, Eddie really tied up. Who got the keys? They didn't want to give him the keys. They giving him a run around. I don't know what you're talking about. He did that himself and he did this. And I said... Come the fuck off of it. Of course, Randall had to confront Marcy about being pregnant and all that shit. Whatever. Um, <laughs> when they found out that he was really tied up up there with them chains, they had to go up there. The girls went up there like, ain't this about a bitch? Now, see, if it would have been me, Ashley would have went up there with a fucking cell phone. And Ashley would have just been like... And what, bitch, I swear to God, say something else to me, touch me, do me, t say some shit when I don't want you to say no shit, bitch, I swear to God, I will put this all on fucking social media, I will put this all around the fucking office and tell them what you like to do, okay? You know, with your little skimpy, tidy whiteys on, oh, your little blacky blackies on, bitch, okay? What the fuck? You know, I, I would do some vindictive ass shit like that because Eddie deserves it. Eddie deserves it. But, you know, they... Larry was going to make them call the locksmith. And right when he called, Lucius called the locksmith, before he could put the full order in, he going to throw the keys over there to him. They go upstairs and unlock him. And, you know, when Eddie was putting his clothes on, he took most of the stuff off, but he kept that chain and that choker on him. And I said, oh, you like that? And Larry was like, I knew he wasn't going to pass no charges because, you know, just ask him or whatever. I said, did you participate up in this shit, Eddie? Because it's looking more and more like he did a little bit. But then again, he was drugged, so he didn't know. Next thing you know, Eddie comes downstairs. He was telling um, Lucius, thank you. Mind you, Lucius got his gun on him. He put his gun in his back pocket and or in the back. And um, next thing you know, Eddie reached back there and he started shooting. Pop, pop, pop. It looked like Larry got hit. Now, if Larry got hit... Bitch, you deserve it. And at this moment, I forget to tell you, Marcy figured it out that Larry was the one that told him, told um, Randall that she was pregnant. But anyway, this was a cute little episode. Y'all got to get Kelly shit together. Get her wig together too, okay? Okay. Y'all making her look older than what the fuck she is. Anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I will see you guys later. Tomorrow for what it is. Um, Friday for uh, Married to Medicine. Sunday, you will be getting two videos. I believe the shot is already up. The um, second episode is on the uh, Showtime app. So if you want to look at it in advance, you can look at it in advance. And yeah, y'all will get all that shit. Okay? I'll see y'all later. Peace.